It's 1908. The Chicago Cubs have just made the final out of the World Series. They're World Series champs. This phrase would not be echoed again for 108 years. This became the world's longest championship drought of any professional sports team. What would happen over the next 108 years is the stories of legends filled with colorful characters. And today I want to take you through the road to victory, breaking the curse. The 108 years being filled with curses such as billy goats, black cats, and Bartman. But finally, finally, victory would take place. So to give you a little history here on this, we have three instances that took place over the course of these 108 years. We have the, coast, the curse of the billy goat in 1945. We have the curse of the black cat in 1969. And we have the Bartman curse of 2003. And while the Cubs would have several popular and well-known characters such as Harry Carey in the seventh inning stretch, Ron Santo, Ernie Banks, Ryan Sandberg, Sammy Sosa, Mark Grace, though they would have a talented roster for many years, the curses would live on. So I want to start off here with just the first curse that took place in 1945, the curse of the Billy Goat. In a 2000, or 2016 article, A.J. Perez with the USA Today dived into the story in an, in an article that appeared in, in October. Local tavern owner William Billy Goat Cianus was not allowed entrance into the World Series game that Chicago Cubs hosted at Wrigley Field. He and his goat Murphy both had tickets. But the story says that the goat stunk so bad that the, the gate entrances would not allow the goat to pass. Giannis, Giannis was quoted as saying, you're going to lose this World Series and you are never going to win another World Series again. Sure enough, the Cubs would go on to lose that game to Detroit and ultimately the World Series. Thus began the Billy Goat curse. Things would go off and on for a little while. In 1969, though, the Cubs finally had some steamrolling in Ron Santo, Billy J uh, Williams, Frank, uh, Fergie Jenkins. All three great players that the Cubs had, the Cubs were off to a great start in 1969. But as the season progressed and as they got closer to the end, the New York Mets, known as the Miracle Mets, were rising quickly. And in mid-September, they were only a game and a half behind the Chicago Cubs for the NL East Division League. The two teams would face off at Shea Stadium. And in an instant, that would become uh, synonymous with the 1969 season, a black cat appeared out of nowhere in front of the Cubs dugout. The cat pranced back and forth around the uh, batter's box, which was filled by Ram Santo, and Leo DeRoche, the Cubs manager. According to Lucas, uh, who wrote an article in Sports Illustrated talking about the Cubs' black cat jinx, Jim Flood, the Cubs' bat boy of the game, heard both Ron Santo and Leo DeRoche lamenting the fact that the black cat had run into the field. The Cubs would ultimately lose the game, and just a few weeks later would no longer be the NLE's champions. The Miracle Mets would go on to win the division, and ultimately the World Series that year. Thus, we had the curse of the Black Cat. 34 years would go by without a glimmer of hope for the Cubs. Again, many great players would come through their rosters. Mark Gray, Sean Dunstan, Andre Dawson, several players but making the playoffs eluded them so many times. Finally, in 2003, we dropped, reached the point where the Cubs were looking like they could make it to the promised land one more time. In 2003, the Cubs were up on the Miami Marlins 3-2 in the NLCS, the Championship Division Series. Their ace, Mark Pryor, was on the mound and cruising through seven innings, made it to the eighth inning, got the first out. And what would happen next would be one where Cubs faithful saw their victory snatched away. On a foul ball hit, drifting towards the stand, Moises Alou ran to catch the ball. The Cub faithful saw a foul ball coming his way, doing what most would do. He reached out to catch the ball. Moises Alou went to catch the ball, and the fan came away with it. And while you might not think, well, that's kind of, you know, shouldn't have caused what would take place over the next five outs, 
the Cubs would go on to lose that game, then lose the following game, losing the series to the Miami Marlins. The Miami Marlins would go on to win the World Series that year. This game became known as the Bartman Curse. So, how did the Cubs finally get there? Breaking the curses. In 2016, finally, the Cubs made the World Series in a story that was made for ESPN's 30 for 30. And in a series that would go down as one of the greatest of all times. As you can see here, Chris Bryant there makes the game-winning throw to first base to Anthony Rizzo to get the third out in the top of the 10th inning, breaking the curse of the Billy Goat, the curse of the Black Cat, and the curse of Steve Bartman. 100 years, 108 years later, the Cubs were finally World Series champions.